Hey folks, Machine Repeat here, and I am having some serious fun today. After many years of talking to my friend Kevin Sykes from Erskine Falls, New York, I finally made it out to visit your place, Kevin. Yep. Great to be here. Thanks for having me out. And uh, man, your collection of original John Deere tractors is really something to see here. Uh, Thanks. How long have you and your brother Keith been collecting your, your original low hour John Deere tractors? I started in the early 90s, okay. mid 90s, and Keith started in the early 2000s. Okay. And of course, folks, uh, Kevin is the guy that I wrote about, and we did a YouTube video this winter about the John Deere 4455. It was a 91 model, was that right, Kevin? That's correct. Okay, with 33 hours on it. That's right. And you sold that tractor for 155,000, was it? 155,000. Okay. And again, uh, if people haven't heard the story, you actually bought that tractor from a doctor in Michigan in '94. I did. With hardly well, like a couple hours on it. I it had two or three hours on it. It was okay. it was almost done. Okay. And you were, I mean, were you in mid 40s now, Kevin? That's correct. So you were a young buck when you bought that tractor. I was. But you bought it with an eye that this thing is going to appreciate, right? I did. I, I, I assumed it was going to appreciate, and okay. I didn't want to use it. I wanted to collect it. Now, what made you, at a, as a 22, 23, 24-year-old young farmer uh, with a forestry background, you, you were busy, but you saw a tractor like that, a, a 1991 4455, and thought, this thing's going to go up in value the next 20 years. That, that's an interesting viewpoint. Uh, what, what made you think that way? I had seen what the 4020s had done, the 1972 okay. 4020s, and how much they'd sure. increased in value up to 92, and they were 20 years old at that yep. time. Okay. And so I thought, well, I, I'm assuming with John Deere's quality, and that was the last of those series made. Right. The 55 series were the last of the, the, old, the old style right. technology. Right. They might increase in value. Okay, now, Kevin, you got to show us your 4440 here. Uh, Certainly. This is a, folks, this is a 82 model, late 1982, power shift. Okay, Power Shift 82, and how many hours on it, Kevin? 1,400 hours. 1,400 hours. Now, where did you buy this tractor? Purchased this tractor in Minnesota, your country. Yeah, well, thanks for coming out our way. That's, and you bought it, uh, you spoke to my friend Todd Houghton, an auctioneer out I of did. Uh, Red Wing. Yeah, years great ago, guy. yes. Okay. And, again, how many years ago did you buy it? Oh, it's been quite a long time ago. I, I'd say 15 years. Okay, and, again, you bought it with those hours just to hold for your own collection. That's right. I had a couple 4440s that I had collected. One that we bought nearly new here on the farm, but we had more hours on it. Okay. So when I saw this one, I realized that I would sell one of my other ones and keep this. Okay. And that, now again, <clears throat> as I go around the country, folks, people talk restored tractors or original, you know, but I haven't run into too many folks to take it to the level of attention to detail like Kevin and his brother Keith Sykes do. Why don't you tell us about this particular tractor, what gets you going about its originalness, Kevin, that makes it so great. And not just that the paint is so bright and that mm -hmm. it's original, but to indicate that it's original, you look for certain things like the decal on the front of the battery box. Right. The fact that the exhaust has never been hot enough to burn all the paint off the manifold. Right. That the muffler is original and it's a special flange that bolts to the manifold. Okay. Not been changed. Uh, the fuel grommet being red on that tractor. Right. Greg, when I look at tractors that people say are so low houred and so nice and original, yeah. you can tell they're repainted immediately because the tiger stripe on the front of the of the hood, the four never lines up on the end of the side screen. Okay. If they are restored properly, at least somebody knows that this decal goes on first and wraps around the tiger stripes here, and the yellow stripe on the front nose caps it. Okay. But I see tractors all the time advertised as original that aren't because you can tell the right. hoods are painted in the right. first picture. Now, I know you, you search the country, U.S. and Canada, we do. every day looking for tractors like this, whether on auctions, private, dealer, whatever, and to sift through, like you were saying, the difference in the verbiage. People say, this is original, this is low hour. Right. Uh, yeah, you, you, I mean, you've seen everything out there. We do. 95% of what you see is not what it's advertised to be. Okay. Now, this tractor here, this was owned by a, an elderly farm couple in, in southern southeast Minnesota. Was that? That's correct. Okay. Now, 10, 15, or 15 years ago, internet wasn't really cranking so much, and you probably didn't get a lot of pictures on this thing before. I didn't have any it. pictures of it. In fact, I, I subscribed to the Midwest Farm Papers, yeah. and that's how I know the auctioneers, and the auctioneers know sure. me and right. know that I buy this low hour late right. model. So you were going off of what Todd said, this is really a nice original, this baby's nice. Those guys are excellent at determining yeah. quality, and they said this is the type of tractor you want to buy. Right. Now, when you got this tractor homed in New York here, uh, 
pleasantly surprised? It was every bit as good as what he had said it was, and it was hard for me to believe it was going to be that good, and yeah. it was. Okay. Yes. Now, you and I were at the auction March 6, 2009 in Hamilton, Illinois, where the, the farmer who struck oil had his 82 model 4440 with 47 hours, brought 58000 bucks. John Kinzenbaugh bought a beautiful tractor. Very nice. But you were, you were telling me quality-wise, originalness, that uh, yours here, you're, I mean, you wouldn't trade them? I'm certain this tractor is a nicer tractor, and I took a neighbor from here out with me. Okay. And he said, "You're going to go out and see one, Kevin. It's nicer than yours. Yeah. It's going to be nicer than yours. It's got yeah. lower hours." Yeah. We got out there. He said, "Kevin, it's not as nice as yours. It, it had some deterioration on the paint, on the sure. nose of the fuel tank, and uh, the chassis had accumulated moisture at different times. Okay. Got some. It, it patinaed. Right. Uh, you know, not the cab upholstery. It didn't mean anything. This cab upholstery is not good in this tractor either, but it's original. Right. But the paint was not as nice." in condition right. as what this one is. Okay. Now, here's what's fun about visiting my friend Kevin, folks, is right next to the tractor we're talking about. Oh, just another John Deere tractor here, no big deal. Oh, wait a minute. It's a 1992 4055 two-wheel drive with 238 hours on it. That's right. Unbelievable. Now, this one, I think maybe a lot of folks have seen advertised out on the internet, Kevin. 100,000 is the... That's correct. Okay. Now, you bought this years ago from a guy in Tennessee with just hardly any hours on it? I had 40 or 42 hours on it when we purchased it. Wow. And uh, again, two-wheel drive, and it's a 92 model? It is, late 1992. Okay. So here again, you were looking at that, uh, you know, the 55 series, that, that find a low-hour original one, rare opportunity to buy, to hold, That's right. knowing that it would increase in value. Being it's a 92 and it's power shift, mm -hmm. cab, triple remotes with all the weights it has on it, makes it a very rare tractor. Right. Out of the 7,000 they built, cab air power shift is the, the, the rarest configuration. Okay. Well, if you are looking for one, folks, it's a brand new tractor. It's a time machine, 1992-4455. Now, again, the fun here, folks, is that we're not talking one or two tractors. We are talking quite a number of them in just astounding condition. And every one of these tractors has an incredible story to it. And, and Kevin, why don't you talk about you and your brother Keith when you acquire original tractors and restore them. Um, again, the term restoration for a lot of people is kind of, you throw it out there, it's, it's big, it's broad, but right. how do you, what does that mean to you guys? To us, it means using complete OEM parts and, and a complete disassemble of the tractor. Okay. Even things that worked properly or that didn't leak are okay. resealed and redone. Transmissions, brakes, right. complete engine overhaul, okay. balancing the motor, taking the tolerances to, to the tight side of everything that John Deere would have required them to be. Right. Okay. All right, now, Kevin, let's have a little fun and walk down the line here. Sure. And we just get a little history on a few of these tractors. Now, we'll start off here. we got a couple 4240s, folks. Factory open station. Factory that's, open station. That is pretty rare. Power shift. That's, Power shift. That's okay. what makes them rare. Okay. At factory open station quad ranges. You see them? There's seven, 800 of those built. How many power shifts? Less than 300 factory open station power shifts built. And you, this is yours on the right and brother Keith's on the left here. Correct. How long have you guys owned these? Uh, Keith's owned his two years. I've owned mine four years. How many hours? Uh, 4,000 and 3,600. Wow. These babies are beautiful, folks. I don't know if the video will quite do it justice, but they are awesome. Okay, take us down the line here, Kev. Why don't you just run us through what we got here? How about our 4040? 4040, again, the factory open station power shift. Less than 400 of these were ever built okay. in that configuration. Okay. You own that one for a while? Uh, oh, this one came from a gentleman in Michigan as well. Michigan. You do get around. Yes, the whole country. <laughs> Sometimes I'll be at an auction, folks, and I, I don't know if Kevin's there, and I'll, I'll see the red hair, and I'll go, oh, that's my friend Kevin. He came yeah. for the tractor. So, All right, we got another 4040 here. Uh, this is a, a, a little more common, but it is still a power shift tractor with extremely low hours in a four-post configuration. Okay. How many hours? Uh, just at 4,000. 4,000, nice. All right. Now we're into a couple 4430s here. The cab one is a late 1977. In fact, it's within the last 100 of all 4430s built. Within the last 100, okay. 100. It's a factory triple hydraulic power shift cab and air wow. with uh, less than 3,000 original hours, completely original. Sweet. And I've been watching auction prices on these things. Uh, nice ones just skyrocket, so. Mm. Now, next door, again, we've got a couple of the uh, factory open station. These are power shifts also, Kevin? Power shift 4430s. Okay. Again, uh, Keith, your brother Keith owns the one on the left, you own the one on the right. Uh, why don't you give us a story on these babies? 
Uh, one is a 76. This one here that's completely restored is a 1977. Okay. Factory power shift. Man, that baby is just humming. How many, uh, how many hours on them? Uh, less than 3,000. Wow. Do you, have a, do you have a, in your head, when you look at tractors, nice condition, an hour range that you won't go over? If the 4,000 hour range is pretty tough to go over unless you're really old. Okay. But in a, in a 55 series, to collect, it would have to be less than 2,000 Less than 2,000. Okay. All right. Well, we'll keep on down the line here, and we've got a 4230. What's the story on this one, Kevin? It's my brother Keith's 1977. It's a, it basically an original power shift, 4,600 hour. Okay. Very it's nice tractor. Station. Okay. And now we get into something pretty interesting. Here, why don't you tell us about this uh, 4320, Kevin? Uh, late 1972 4320 power shift. Power shift. Never built by John Deere for sale. Okay. So you have gone to great lengths over the years talking to the engineers back in the day who were working on these things. And so you, you're doing kind of history on these things. You found out that they, they were built, start They built a prototype or two, an experimental okay. model. Okay. Uh, and as I understand it, a gentleman named Art Aubent was an engineer for Deere that was, was the person that did that work. Okay. The engineer that worked with him, we came in contact with and described how John Deere was going to do that tractor, build that tractor okay. for production. So you guys uh, bought the tractor. It came out of like Pennsylvania or something you were saying? Came out of an estate PA. Okay. So it was a good, good solid tractor and you guys set to <clears throat> build your own power shift. Yes, we did. We got the parts from Deere. And what was that process like? It took over two years to do it. Wow. And as people have stumbled across this tractor or seen that you had it, I understand you've had quite a range of uh, reactions from people to it. From people that disbelieve that that is authentic, yeah. to something that's authentic, to people that want to buy it to collect it. Right. You have had, have had some offers on it? We have had some offers. Well, you had another one a couple years ago, didn't you? Another. We did. We sold that tractor. It was Sisters. It was the first one we did okay. to see that it would work. Right. And then, then this one was the one that we... A little more okay. fully detailed. Okay. So is this one for sale? My brother thinks it is, and since we own half of it, and I don't <laughs> want to sell my half, uh, uh, you could buy 50% of it. It may be for sale here in the near future. He's okay. changing jobs. And Kevin, your website, if folks just want to have fun, I mean, let alone look for the nicest John Deere tractors they'll ever find, your website is willowrunfarms.net. Dot net. Willowrunfarms.net. Okay. Right. Check it out, folks. You're just going to have fun just looking at these tractors and tell your buddies about them. But uh, we're not done yet here. we got a few more. Uh, let's hop over to the uh, to the 4000, sure. Kevin. You guys got a couple of them there. Uh, I understand uh, your brother Keith owns one that's uh, kind of rare for a couple reasons. Yeah, he owns a 4000 power shift that's rare in and of itself, but okay. this particular 4000 is the second to last 4000 power second shift ever built. So we're right, we're this one over here, right? Correct. Okay, let's go take a look. So this is, must be a 72 model then? It is. 4000 and... Where did Keith acquire this one? Was it local or? Northern New York State. Okay, so not too far. About three, four hours. And uh, again, second to last serial number. That's right. Okay, and you guys, you went to the work of trying to find the last serial number. We did. Once okay. we bought this tractor, he realized, well, it, it has more value if if the last serial number has been dismantled or right. can't be located. Right. So you found, where were those folks? At, uh, In Kentucky. Kentucky, okay. Kentucky. Trail takes you all directions, my friend. It's taken us everywhere. <laughs> uh, Texas, uh, California, Kentucky, everywhere. Uh, great fun. And, and Kevin, I know I, I've talked to you before, but uh, occasionally you and, and Keith will bring your tractors to the biggest farm show in New York, which is, is that Empire State? The, the Empire Farm Days. Empire Farm Days. Is that in the summer show or fall? Or? It is. It's normally in the first or second week of August. Okay. Now, you guys, typically how many of your tractors do you bring to the show? Between four and six. So you bring four or six of these beauties out, and I can only imagine the reaction you get. I mean, it must be it must be like a magnet. It really is. The uh, the dealers on either side of us are the, <laughs> the the people that are displaying their equipment sure. for, for sale. Right. New product dealers right. ha really have an interesting take on it. And that they yeah. say, hey, nobody pays attention to what we're selling or what we have here on display when they see your display. You're bringing them into the neighborhood, though. We are. <laughs> We are. Well, people just have a passion for, for tractors like this, and I'm sure they see the quality and, and the originalness and the, and the beautiful restoration work that you guys do. 
on your tractors here. And, and uh, I was serious when I told you if you and your brother wanted to, not that you're not busy enough, right? but if you would package your tractors and have them as an attraction to farm shows or farm events around the country, you guys would be a huge draw. So just something to think about, bud. Maybe in the future. <laughs> okay. Well, Kevin, hey, it's been great fun to finally come out and uh, see your collection here and, and your brother Keith. And Man, you guys just keep doing what you're doing. It's great fun. And again, the website, if folks want to check you guys out, Kevin? WillowRunFarms.net. All right. Thanks again. Thank you. Well, folks, I sure had a good time in Oriskany Falls, New York, recently visiting my friend Kevin Sykes and seeing the collection of low-hour original and restored John Deere tractors that Kevin and his brother Keith have amassed and uh, great fun. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you want to see more pictures that I took at Kevin's place, just hop on to the new blog I'm writing for my friends at agweb.com. And I've got some more pictures posted here. You can just scroll down and see some more fun pictures there. Uh, great fun. A whole bunch of shots for you. So again, you can just go to agweb.com website of the good folks at Farm Journal we'll be writing for now and again uh, you can scroll down in their blog section on their home page and here's the link you can click on also check out my friend Margie's machinery blog Margie's the uh, farm machinery editor for Farm Journal she always has great information so again check that out at agweb.com